that's the wrong issue. Look, I was outside in the 90s. I've been to Freaknik as an aspiring young journalist covering the story, of course. Oh, yeah. And when I was there, I saw really? what was happening. Inspiring it's not just about women Mark? being half naked. It's not about women's Ooh. hypersexuality. No, this Freaknik is dancer. about men ogling, yeah. men fondling. Freaknik had a lot to do with male hypermasculinity and sexual these violence. Freaknik videos? Is and I'm not saying that anybody... Fest. It is a sexual it's, assault fest. That's not the only thing going on out there. Fest. I'm trying to... This brother, oh my God, it's like he is going to grift on black issues and to whatever supremacist is saying, hey, look, we need another house need growth. So see you later, Mark. We're, we're done with you, right? But come on, Mark. Like you see, like this is what really irritates me about some of these beta men who really are just trying to act like they're the savior or champion for black women. Like, I don't know, but it's, it's like you men are so emasculated. Like you are devoid of reality. Like you are absolutely devoid of reality. When you see women who are pulling their shirts down, right? When they are bending over and they're twerking and they're, you know, it's like girls gone wild, right? Where you saw the chicks and they're like, woo! You know, I, I, I got something on, by the way. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. But I'm just saying, you know, it, this is willful behavior. No one is coercing these women to do this. These women specifically went to these locations to do what they were doing because Freak Nick was a very popular event, just like events around other cities of the kind were as well. So you're talking about Bell Out out here in Detroit. You know, some people are like, man, if they drop a Bell Out, die. and you know, here's the thing. We all have gone through points in our lives where we felt young and we felt free and adventurous and stuff. And I don't think anybody who was in that Freak Nick documentary should really feel embarrassed or, or you, 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 that was a point in your time. You evolved. You're not the same person. You know what I mean? If that is your situation, some people never change and they are the same people, you know, they're freak Nicks until the end, you know, but let's just to say that, you know, I think people should just, you know, not be freaking out about, you know, actions that they've done in their past. That event was so long ago and, you know, this is a satanic world we live in where these people like to, you know, dig up your past and try to use it against your present, you know, use it against you in a present to impact the outcomes of your future, right? That's basically what they do, right? They dig up your past, right, to impact your present, to to ultimately impact the outcomes of your future. And so to me, it's very satanic. Is you know you see these cancel culture people who are digging up stuff, old tweets and stuff. It's like if you are not an evolving person, if you're not somebody who's have stepped back like maybe even multiple times in your life and like you know what, I'm heading down the wrong path. This is the wrong direction. I'm gonna pivot and do something else that's more useful and productive to me for me. Then you know, if you're that person, then freak Nick documentary shouldn't bother you. You know what I mean? It's like stand on what you've done in the past, stand on what you did. That was a point in your life. And the point where you're at right now could be different. And you not only want to stand up for yourself at this moment, but you also want to stand on your past. And that's like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a moment in my life. I was young. I was immature. I was free. I'm not going to allow you to judge me on that moment right now when I am doing things drastically different and I'm a different person. And I think that's what people who are freaking out about this Freak Nick video really should, you know, try to focus on. You know what I mean? This, these are grave digging cyber lords. They're looking at every single thing that you've done in your past and they're trying to get inside your head and impact your future and don't allow them to do it. I think it's like pathetic when people start apologizing for things that they did in the past. It's like, look, I'm not going to apologize for that moment. Maybe at that moment I meant what I was saying 
or maybe I said a harm, you know, har harmful joke or perceived harmful joke that really was, you know, out of candor and the person that was on the receiving end or the people that were around me, they got it. And maybe some irrational person that's just addicted to being offended by everything did it. And that's nobody's business, but their own. And so I think that people need to start standing up for their past and not allowing other people to use it against them. And, I, and, and, you know, don't be freaking out about, you know, people who are creating documentaries, you know, about a moment in time. It's like, is Freak Nick about to come back? What is the whole point of commemorating that point in time? People have their own photos and videos that they can go back to if they want to relive those moments in their lives. But, you know, people are going to make money all kinds of ways. So whatever. But. You know, I, I just say this to say, you know, this freak, you know, this coming up, you know, you know, is to me not something where people should be, oh, God, this is sexual harassment and hyper masculinity. You know, I mean, it really should be um, a perspective for younger people. Like, look, be careful what you're doing out here in these streets, because, you know, somebody may start making documentaries on all the stupid challenges that people did and you may be in one of them. So it, it teaches you not to be on the bandwagon because Freak, Freak Nick was very popular, just like doing going other places where, right? And you knew what Freak Nick was about, right? Everybody knew what Freak Nick was about. So, you know, if you're popping up in a documentary, you probably had a very, very fun young time in your life. You were a freak. We all were. Yeah, Anyways, but Mark Lamont Hill, he's kind of placating into this SJW, women are victimized, women are being insulted by hyper-masculine men. And it's like, sit down, beta male, sit down. You are exactly the dude who, he may not let a woman boss him around, but his beta male tendencies probably he is probably hot tempered, right? And narcissistic. Hot tempered and narcissistic. That's what I think about Mark Lamont Hill. But yep, crazy. This dude, I just wish he would sit down. I wish the wish the um white supremacist on that side would just stop giving him biscuits and flowers. But anyways, Gavin Newsom, you know, you, you've been hearing about California and the reparations program. And, you know, here's a realistic thing that I think people need to think about. First of all, Gavin Newsom wants to be president. And so because he wants to be president, Gavin Newsom is absolutely going to do everything he can to almost bankrupt maybe California to get black people a lump sum, one whatever time payment or whatever they perceive to be a reparation for slavery. Not sure how they're going to be able to sort of go through and figure out everybody who is a foundational black American, but that's going to be sort of a financial burden for the state of its own just to figure out who should have reparations for slavery. But off that, it's not a program that is realistic for the United States, especially in an economic situation that we're in. If you were talking about giving Black people reparations, it really should come in a form of tax breaks. Jewish people, descendants of the Holocaust, they get tax breaks. I don't understand why that was not something that was implemented for foundational black Americans as well. And so, you know, however they measure who is a descendant of the Holocaust should be maybe some similar measurement or strategy for FBAs, right? Um, so I say this to say that, you know, it's it, it, to me, I think this is a po political leverage for Gavin Newsom. You know, he's going to drop the first round of payments, right? You know, people are going to be like that Dave Chappelle. You know, I just bought this baby in a cigarette truck or whatever. But hopefully they don't do that. Hopefully they will do right by themselves. But we'll see. Um, but then it's going to that's going to be something he tries to run on. Right. And then he's going to literally probably try to convince black Americans that, hey, you know, I did this in California. I can do this for you, too. And, you know, there's a lot of FBAs that are like, cut the check, cut the check, cut the check. So they are very susceptible to buy into that. And they're going to look at California and they're not going to look at the, the overall economic situation of the U.S. to see if that's going to be something that's practical 
um, to roll out nationwide, which I think Gavin Newsom is going to probably run on that premise, just like Joe Biden tried to run on reparations and it never happened, right? California, I think they started doing case studies and dangling that like black people might got, get it. And I think that's probably how Biden got, a, you know, the, you know, turnout that he did with black people possibly it's because they kept dangling reparations and it never happened Biden didn't even come to the office really prioritizing black people and that's one thing Trump did those HBCUs who got your funding cut by the Biden administration Trump didn't do that to you but whatever y'all don't want to appreciate it so you got it taken away by your savior Joe Biden but off that, Mark Lamont Hill, I was just looking at this um, video that Tariq Nasheed uh, posted, and um, it's just like, bro, are you serious? What did Tariq say? Tariq said, did not tell you all uh, that this was the narrative they were going to start running with surrounding the Freak Nick documentary. So basically, Mark Lamont Hill is running with the narrative that it was about sexual assault of women and ma uh, hyper masculinity and men filling all over women who were willfully showing their boobs and everything else. You know, they were going there because they was like, Ooh, this is a place where I can really let loose and not really care because everybody's doing this. It's like going to a nude beach, right? Like it's literally like going to a nude beach, right? You know, and like somebody sort of documents nude beaches and you, you see your naked ass body in this nude beach. It's like, I really didn't expect for that to come up, but yeah, my body's awesome. So whatever, but it's embarrassing. You don't want everybody to see your body, obviously, but that's kind of how I look at this freak Nick thing. Right. So what else I'm trying to keep my videos short. I actually do have a longer video, so you guys are going to see me back to back today. You're going to see me back to back to back today um, because there was another video that I was dropping some gems in that I, got, I want you guys to catch too. So I just wanted to do these side chick points to that other video that I'm about to drop um, just because this happened to show up in my Twitter feed and I actually posted on Twitter about Gavin Newsom. So I wanted to kind of put this in a video form too, because I don't know if I'm going to be, do you, you guys know how sporadic I am, you know, catch me on the next one, follow me on Twitter, Angie C313. If you like my videos, they're not high production or anything like that, but I do like to drop some, some, critical gems that you might want to think about. Um, so like, share, and subscribe. I don't do that enough, and I know a lot of people do it kind of coming into the video. But like, share, and subscribe if you like my content, and I appreciate you tuning in. Bye.